Hello, Bio20, and welcome to our next lesson in the respiratory system. In our last lesson, we learned to identify the structures and functions of the respiratory system. You also were able to identify the parts of a pig plug. Today, we're going to start talking about how air pressure actually helps us move air in and out of our lungs through something called inhalation and exhalation. So before we can get into that, we need to talk about why breathing is important. One of the most important reasons is for the exchanges of gases. Now, what you have to remember is that when we breathe in and our lungs inflate, we are bringing oxygen from outside of our body to the inside of our lungs. Remember, we learned in cellular respiration that we utilize oxygen to perform cellular respiration. So we have to bring it into our body. We also learned that a byproduct or what we get rid of when we're doing cellular respiration is carbon dioxide. So we need to get rid of carbon dioxide from our body. Now breathing and the exchanging of gases, the key part here is getting rid of waste. Maintaining homeostasis within our body is all about maintaining that balance. Carbon dioxide as a gas is very dangerous to us and if we if it ends up building up within our body, it can cause damage. It can cause us to become very sick, almost like dementia. Like you have a hard time remembering things, you're dizzy, you lack focus, and eventually you can slip into an, a coma if you have carbon dioxide build up too high. So exchanges of gases is a really important part about our breathing, okay? So for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide from our body and the environment, Another really important part about breathing, okay, is when we breathe, okay, like I said earlier, we are able to then exchange those gases into our circulatory system, utilizing oxygen at the muscular level. This is a little commercial that we will watch shortly. So let's talk about pressure. How do we actually bring in oxygen into our body? We know we breathe in, but how does it actually work? So we need to consider the relationship between volume and pressure. So in your notes, you are going to be drawing this picture. All right, so it's a bottle with a balloon in it and showing that we're trying to bring oxygen inside the balloon as if we are inflating a, uh, we're inflating a lung. That's what the balloon is representing. So when the volume of the lung gets higher, so that means when we are actually trying to inflate our lung, the pressure in our, inside our lung is low because pressure works on a high to low concentration. So you have to think about it as a concentration gradient. Oxygen is outside, the pressure is high, pushing on us trying to get oxygen into our body. So the oxygen pressure is high outside of our body and low on the inside. So outside of the lung has high pressure as the, and then with that high pressure, air rushes into our lungs. So our volume of our lung is getting bigger as we inflate it, but the pressure is higher outside our body than inside our body. And that's why we can push air into our lungs. When we actually breathe out, okay? So we're gonna draw this picture now. Breathing out represented again by this balloon. You can see this balloon is no longer filled with air. So what ends up happening is it's the opposite with pressure when we're exhaling. Our lungs are inflated. We now have all this oxygen inside. The pressure is really high inside our lung, okay? We know pressure or oxygen pressure, carbon dioxide works on high to low. So if it's high on the inside of our body, what needs to happen is it needs to move from inside to outside. And that's how we exhale. So when pressure is high on the inside of the lungs, the air has to move from high to low. And that's how we get rid of carbon dioxide from our lungs. So we call these two processes inhalation and exhalation. So they look a little something like this. Inhalation is when we breathe in. So the air pressure in our chest cavity and lungs is reduced. So remember we talked about our actual lungs are inflating but the pressure is low. So gas flows in from high to low from the environment to the lungs. So inhalation is all about the diaphragm contracting, moving down to give space for our lungs. Exhalation is the opposite. When we exhale, pressure is now really high inside our lungs and it needs to leave. So it rushes back out through the trachea and out our mouth. How does this happen? 
Well, it helps that our diaphragm relaxes, it's no longer contracting, and it pushes up and goes back to where it was, and our lungs start to deflate, and that is exhalation. I've already stated this earlier, but we need to remind ourselves that oxygen in the air is very, very, very vital to cellular respiration for us to be able to get energy. And when we do cellular respiration, we produce carbon dioxide, which is a waste, which is a product that can hurt us. So it has to be removed from the body. So we want to remember this as we talk about the key parts of respiration. Why are we talking about respiration? We're talking about it because breathing in brings us the much needed oxygen we need and breathing out removes all that carbon dioxide. So if you remember back to our equation, glucose plus oxygen, will give us carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So the glucose we, that was made in photosynthesis that we ate, the oxygen we're breathing in, is going to be utilized by glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the ETC. The Krebs cycle is going to give us a bunch of carbon dioxide that leaves as waste, and we breathe out. And water is created because the oxygen we breathe in is waiting at the very end of that electron transport chain, and it is going to combine with hydrogen to create water. That also makes energy for us. So without oxygen to be present to get that hydrogen, we wouldn't have energy being built in our bodies. So that's why breathing in is so key and why oxygen has to go to places like our muscles where the mitochondria are so that they can start developing as much ATP as possible. So here's some just fun facts about the lungs, okay? Um, the lungs, because they're mostly made out of air, because you have to think about it, you breathe in, the air gets trapped in there. They're the only organ that can float on water. So if you take a little piece of the lung and drop it on a big on some water, it's going to float. A comparison to if you take some of the heart and drop it in water, it'll sink. Okay. Every minute you breathe in about six liters of air. So if you think about if you are a milk drinker or you drink two liters of pop, it's three two liters. It's two. It's about roughly one and a half. Okay big jugs of milk, that's how much you breathe in every minute. Your right lung is actually bigger than your left lung to accommodate your heart. So your right lung actually has three lobes and your left lung only has two. And that's because your heart has to sit in there so one lung is actually smaller than the other. And the other really interesting piece is that the surface area of your lungs, if you were to stretch it out, the surface area of your lungs would cover a tennis court. So like you have the same surface area in your lungs to exchange gases as you do that covers an entire tennis court. So we're going to talk about how air gets into your body. What is the pathway it passes? So we're going to just quickly write this down so that we can remember we learned our structures, we learned our functions. We've now learned that air comes in because of pressure. Air with oxygen is really high pressure on the outside and it comes in and travels into our mouth or our nose, so either mouth or nose, air can come in, and it's going to pass down our trachea. Now passing down the trachea, it'll go past the pharynx and it'll go past the larynx. I did not include those, but that's okay. You should know that they are structures that are there. Once it's in the trachea, it's going to hit the left and right bronchi. So those bronchi are the tubes that are branching off from the trachea. And then they're going to branch even more into a bunch of bronchioles. So they're moving from the bronchi to the bronchioles all the way down to the alveoli where gas exchange occurs. This is because the pressure was high out here and we needed to breathe in air. So it passed through all of these structures. Then pressure was really high inside the lungs. So it gets pushed all the way back out. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and Bio20s. If you have any questions, please let me know, and we will talk soon.